Hey everyone, my name is Lizzie, and you might be wondering why there's a pan in my face. Well, if you haven't read the title, today we're going to be doing a batch, a batch of raw wash. I'd like to call it what rum is made of. So this is what happens before the distilling process. So we're going to do the fermentation process and you'll be able to figure out what is included inside rum before it reaches 40%. So I have a pan and what I want to do is mix a bunch of ingredients in this pan, make sure that everything meshes well together and at the end put them in this jar right here. So everything in this pan must fit inside here and this is a five liter container so I want to make sure that I start with water. So I have to put three liters of water in order for there to have enough space. So I'm still gonna have to add sugar, molasses, and I want everything to fit inside the container. So three liters is about half a pan. And this pan has water that's heating up. So I have a little portable stove. And I'm making sure that the water is heated up because what we wanna add is sugar and molasses and we wanna make sure that those ingredients are dissolved. So. How much sugar should I put? I've made my friend try my alcohol recently and he said it's too sweet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little less sugar this time. However, you wanna make sure that there's a balance because the less sugar you add, the less alcohol you're gonna produce. And I typically want my alcohol to be roughly at 15 to 20%. So this time it might have to be closer to 15%, but 15 is fine. So let's go ahead and take the sugar. I've used a more yellowish type of sugar before, but today I'm using white sugar. So the yeast has an easier time dissolving white sugar compared to brown sugar or molasses. And you can either approximate the sugar or you can do it with a measuring scale. If you'd like here, however, this is not necessary. More or less grains of sugar will not make the difference in your alcohol. We also have molasses. These are the ones that are usually used for baking and there's about one third left molasses. So what I typically do is start with the molasses. I either, either add the rest of the box, either half the box, but I don't add the full one. And you'll see that molasses texture is very sticky. I don't know if you see that, but you're gonna have to use some water to get all the molasses in. And you want to make sure that the water is not boiling because it doesn't need to boil, it just needs to be warm, just enough to dissolve your mixture. So as we see, the molasses are still flowing. And to help speed this up, you can put water in the box, shake it, and dump in the rest. So when you add molasses to your recipe, this is included in the amount of sugar. So based on the nutritional value, it says that per 20 grams of molasses, there's 13 grams of sugar. So you just have to add that to your recipe and deduct this from the whole amount of sugar so you don't have too much sugar. So now that you've calculated how much sugar that is equivalent to, you can add the rest in granulated sugar right here this is a two kilogram container and let's say you want to add 500 grams of sugar you can add a quarter of the bag or if you want to add one kilogram you can add half of the bag or you could put this in a separate container and weigh it on the weighing scale if you want to be specific both ways work about half of the bag is full and i'm gonna just dump in a portion of this bag not the whole thing One thing that I forgot to mention is that you need a towel because you will definitely be doing a mess. And if you'd like to look at the video where I mention all the equipment that you need, you can look at it right here. So once you put the sugar in, you're gonna see that the pan is no longer half full, but it's about three quarters full. Just by adding the sugar, your whole quantity increases. And you want to make sure that everything fits and nothing overflows from the pan. That was one of my first mistakes. I put five liters of water and there was just no more place for the sugar and molasses. Therefore, I had to make two batches and one of the batches had mold in it. I ended up just throwing it away. So once you have your whole mixture together, it's basically it. And I know it seems like there's a lot of sugar added, but do not fret when you add yeast. The yeast eats the sugar and turns it into alcohol. So you won't be drinking diabetes. 
And you can decrease the amount of sugar if uh, you prefer dry alcohol, that's possible as well. Just add less sugar. And you don't have to add molasses. If you want to make mead, you can add honey. If you want to make beer, you can add grains. You can also add fruits or fruit juices. So your source of sugar can vary and the possibilities are endless. So if you're really on a tight budget and you don't have molasses, you can just add sugar, honestly. It's just that your alcohol will be transparent, which is fine. So I see that the pan is pretty warm and you want to make sure that the, the, the temperature of the alcohol is roughly around 27 degrees Celsius. So you're going to have to cool it down if I'm going to shut off the stove. And the next step is really just pouring this mix into, into the fermentation jar, adding the yeast and just wait for your magic to work. So one thing you want to make sure of doing before you sit down, if you're doing this sitting down, is adding water into your airlock. So that water is going to indicate if your fermentation is working. If you see a little bubbling in here, that means that the yeast is eating the sugar because once the yeast eats the sugar, it produces CO2, which are little bubbles. If it's not bubbling, there might be a problem. So if it's not bubbling, it's possible maybe that your, your lid is not screwed on tightly and that the CO2 just escapes from the lid instead of escaping from here. We'll discuss that another day. However, Usually, this is supposed to bubble for it to indicate that your fermentation is working. Meanwhile, while you put the water in or while you're waiting for your wash to cool off, you can wash your equipment and you can always test it with a thermometer. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get this thermometer and all the other equipment in this video. And you can plug it in. This is a baby thermometer. So I'm going to just put it inside the wash. It seems to be beeping out of control, meaning it's too hot. It's indicating that the baby has a fever. So you want to wait till your wash cools off a bit and then measure the temperature. You, meanwhile, you could put it in the fridge to accelerate the process. You can do your yeast starter. So what the yeast starter is, you just put a bit of this solution and you put yeast in it. Once you put the yeast, you let it sit there. You can, you can let it sit there. It's suggested to sit there up to 24 hours. However, if you forgot or you don't have time, you can always put it for a bit and let the yeast get used to the wash that it's going to be sitting in and once that yeast starter is made you just dump it into your fermenting jar. So speaking of fermenting jar, you want to make sure that it's disinfected because you don't want any bacteria, any fungus growing in. Yeast is a fungus and you want to make sure that it doesn't bring mold into your wash. Because yeast does multiply, it eats dead yeast cells and once it eats the sugar and the dead yeast cells, it has more energy and it can reproduce. So you want to make sure you disinfect your equipment, make sure you don't use boiling water. So to disinfect this time, I used hot water from the, from the sink. You can also use star sand. You can use what you use to sterilize your baby equipment. Just make sure that there's no abrupt changes in temperature, so don't, don't bring your equipment from cold to extra hot because then glass will break and plastic will as well. Now, I believe that it's time to add this solution into the fermenting jar. You can either let the solution cool down here or in the jar, but if you want to start cleaning up, you can put this directly into the fermenting jar. It's hot, so you want to make sure you put this on a coaster and not directly on your table so it doesn't burn. And you're done with your portable stove for the day. All right, so now this is the part that I'm always scared of when you pour from the pan to the fermenting jar. You wanna make sure it doesn't splash everywhere because it's hot and sticky. So here goes nothing. I'm just gonna get the spoon out of the way and notice how I use this concave spoon. You don't need it to stir, however, I just use the same spoon from the beginning to end and this is easier to scoop your solution. You'll be able to see the pouring. And I'm using a new pan this time, so hopefully it fits inside this container. So while you're waiting for your wash to cool down, you can start cleaning, cleaning the whole mess that you've made, doing the dishes, and get back to it.
know what? I've been thinking about it and I will do a yeast starter. So you can use any container, put in some of your wash. So this is like telling the yeast, this is what your next two to four weeks are gonna look like. So you wanna prep them for their environment. You wanna ease them into it so they can start getting active at first and then they could just thrive in their environment. So you put some in the container. So there's no guidelines on how much solution you should have for the yeast starter, as long as the yeast is able to have sugar. So there, ha there has to be a little bit of sugar and if there's not enough in your whole wash, the yeast is just gonna go starving. So there's gonna be a lot of yeast that has no food to eat and they'll just be looking, looking for food and if there's no sugar for the yeast to eat, that means that they won't convert anything into alcohol. So this, we're pretty sure based on the, on the recipe that I use that there's sugar. So now we can add in the yeast. I'll use that yeast for this batch. Again, I've, I haven't had any off flavors with that yeast, so I'm continuing with what works. However, you can always use uh, baker's yeast if you have that at home, just lying around if you bake cakes. You can also use turbo yeast if you're looking for a quick alcohol making process but you might have off flavors with turbo yeast and there are other yeast there are liquid yeast that i've never used uh, let me know if you use liquid yeast if you use liquid yeast let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on that i hear that there are liquid yeast that yield honey flavor that seems very interesting and i'm looking for new yeast that i could try so liquid yeast would um, probably be a good stepping point so how much yeast should you add depending on how big your wash is? So mine is one gallon, five liters. So I know that for five gallons, you have to add one pack of yeast, which is five grams. So for one gallon, I typically add one teaspoon of yeast. And it seems a little hot at the moment still. So heat is always good because yeast gets active when it's hot. When it gets cold, they become dormant. Like everyone is in the winter, you start moving slower and they don't act as fast so it might take a longer time to produce alcohol that's why now i live in a country where there's cold climate and i'm in the summer right now and it seems like my alcohol finishes in two weeks instead of four which is great so i'm gonna take some yeast here one teaspoon of yeast and dump it in do, do, do. Dump it in the yeast starter. So this is what it looks like at time zero. There should be a little bubbles in it. And once, once I feel like it, honestly, because I won't wait 24 hours, because this is going to be cold in 24 hours and it seems a little more complex to warm it up. So I'm gonna wait a few minutes. I usually suggest to wait up to 24 hours. So I'm gonna wait a few minutes and then dump everything in and stir the pot. Notice that I have a pH meter and I did not use it because I only use this if there's a problem. So if let's say there's no bubbling and there's enough water, cause you wanna make sure, the first thing you wanna make sure is that there's enough water in your solution because if there's not enough water, then the yeast are let's say suffocating if there's just too much sugar they get overwhelmed they get stressed and this leads to off flavors so if everything is good in the environment you want to make sure that the ph is good so it should be around 5.2 to 5.4 optimally and this is where the yeast thrives in so this would measure that we also have ph strips i got some ph strips recently i haven't opened it yet so I'm saving that for another time. One thing that you shouldn't forget when you just start doing your wash is calculate how much sugar is in it. So the amount of sugar is gonna determine your potential amount of alcohol. So you wanna make sure you're not making 3% alcohol because what's the point? Just drink juice. And you wanna make sure that there's enough water in the environment. In order to test this, you're gonna need a hydrometer and a cylinder that has also been disinfected and this is plastic so you want to make sure that you do not use boiling water again because it might crack the bottom oh god 
which it is actually I noticed that it's cracked I'm not sure if you see the crack I'm just gonna try to pour because without this well without that you could just put the hydrometer directly into your jar okay so you want to make sure that there's enough space for the the solution and the hydrometer so you want to fill it up up to 180 here make sure it's not full you always have to consider adding more stuff so always make sure that there's a leeway of space so nothing spills nothing more spills so i tilt the hydrometer a bit oh god ah oh my god oh my god no the cylinder is cracked unfortunately so i'm gonna have to put the hydrometer directly into the fermenting jar to figure out how much alcohol I can get. Such a bummer. Half my equipment is cracked, which is a not a good sign. I should really stop using boiling water. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna drop it in and give it a little spin. You know what? I don't think this is representative of the actual starting gravity. There's just no more space for the hydrometer to go downwards. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get another cylinder and try this again. Based on the starting gravity inside the fermenting jar, it's at 1.092. Okay, honestly, I wasn't able to find anything else that could replace the cylinder on the spot. So I put some rubber gloves. They're clean. They're, um, what, they, it's what they use in the hospitals. So I'm gonna try this again. Hopefully it doesn't leak. There's a way to get through it. If this doesn't work, honestly, I might have to buy a cylinder and film the rest another day. Yeah, see that right there? It's leaking. Okay, guys, I have two options. Either I buy a second hydrometer and film the rest on that day, but we're not doing that because this wash will be cold by then. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to base myself on the hydrometer reading in here, which was 1.092. I can also keep a portion on the side and test that starting gravity once I get the cylinder. So once this starting gravity is done, you can put in the yeast. You have to measure the starting gravity before you add the yeast in because once the yeast is in, that's it. You just close the lid, tighten the lid, and you let it sit there until the fermentation is done. So I will be buying a new cylinder and it should be arriving before the fermentation is done which is in two to four weeks, because in order to know if the fermentation is done, you need to measure if the final gravity is between 0 0.990 and 1.000. Determining if the fermentation is done with just an eye test is a, is a bit sketchy because you never know, maybe the yeast are not done eating the sugar and you wanna make sure you produce the most alcohol that you potentially can before bottling it up. So is anyone wondering what happened to our yeast starter? Well, here it is. So there's a little bit of foam. I'm not sure if you see it. There's a little bit more bubbles than before. And the longer you leave it, the more the yeast has the chance to eat. So it's taking a little time. And at the beginning, you shouldn't you wouldn't necessarily see bubbles right away. So you could start seeing it after 24 hours, unless it's turbo yeast, then Turbo yeast, they have yeast nutrients inside the yeast package, so you might see bubbling right away. And the longer you let your fermentation, the less and less bubbles you'll see because the yeast start off really strong, eat all the sugar they can, and as the time goes by, the, the fermentation happens slower and slower. So it's time to dump in the yeast inside your wash. Should I use these nutrients? Honestly, it's pretty hot these days, so I'm wondering if I need it because the hot temperature invigorates the yeast itself. I should just use it for the cold and winter months. No, you know what? I will use yeast nutrients. We have some here, and I put the same amount of nutrients as I do yeast. And a friend told me that yeast nutrients are actually made of dead yeast cells. That would make sense since yeast eats other dead yeast cells 
to survive. If we put one teaspoon, the same quantity as the yeast, inside the jar, the more stimulation, the better. Now I just mix it up. So I see that there's some yeast that you might be able to see on screen. The last part is putting the airlock and the lid. So you have this round thing that you put inside the hole. Honestly, you guys, after my, my cylinder broke, my jar broke, I'm gonna need some recommendations of what equipment you use. I know there are those big plastic buckets, those five gallon ones that I can use. However, it just seems, it seems like a lot. So let me know if, in the comments below if that's the only other option I have. Maybe I should stop using glass. But for the cylinder, by looking into Amazon, I do not see any other options for cylinder. I start with the bottom and then ended up at the top. The top is more hard. And the bottom is more of like a sort of plastic paper. So it went in easier that way. And once your gummy thing is on the lid, you can put in the airlock. If it's tight, it's normal because you don't want any air or any bugs going inside. So it's in there. It doesn't move. If you shake it, make sure the yeast is in and you close your lid. Close it tight. You can just stir it a bit. You can just stir it a bit. To make sure everything goes everywhere. This is what it's supposed to look like. And the next day it's supposed to look like that with the bubbles. So if it does not look like that and there's no bubbles, you can always wait one to two, maybe three days. And if there's still no bubbles, you might have to check the pH, add more water. We're gonna have to troubleshoot that. So hope you enjoyed this video of how to make your alcohol from home. So depending on what you use, if you wanna use molasses, honey, fruits, it's gonna or grains, it's gonna determine what your alcohol is gonna be. So this is to make beer, mead, cider. If you wanna make strong alcohol like rum, vodka, brandy, you can use the same ingredients, but you're gonna need a still. So a still is an equipment that you can purchase and just be careful with your legislation because it's possible that distilling is illegal where you're from. However, it's the same beginning process. So we're gonna go back to the roots, to fermentation, and this is how alcohol is created from scratch. What I learned today is to never put boiling water on your equipment. Since not only did my fermenting jar, my fermenting glass jar break, but it turns out the plastic cylinder for the hydrometer as well cracked. So we have to buy a new one. But we can still rely on the, the measurement that the hydrometer gave inside the fermenting jar. So it's best to write it down because you'll need this measure. So I put in 1.092 as the starting gravity and the date. And I just put a little post-it on my fermenting jar so I'll know how long it's been and at the end, how much alcohol that I'll have. So if you found this video valuable, share it with a friend. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.